Hi, yes, sorry, my hair's gone a bit wild and wavy today, but I'm going to the gym later, so I didn't really see the point of doing much with it. And I'm full of cold, so excuse my voice. Okay, quick book review. Um, actually, I didn't really want to read this particularly. My dad bought it a while ago and he passed it on to me. It's been sat there for ages, and well, you can see on my bed over here where there's still a pile of books, but we've been having a good sort out of the loft and stuff. Um, and a few books were sort of in my room that I moved up there and so on and so forth. And this happened to be in my room. And he said, I can't believe that you haven't read that yet. He said, trust me, read it next, you'll love it. So I was like, all right, all right. So, and I have to say the first couple of chapters I wasn't too sure about, but after that I was hooked and I actually cried last night by the end of it. So this is Hitler's Canary by Sandy Toxvig. And um, this is a hardback, but I think you can get it in softback now. Um, and it says, starring daring schoolboys, Bams, or Bamze and Anton. Bamze was actually, well, I'll tell you about the author in a minute, but Bamze is actually um, the Danish word for teddy bear. But there's a reason behind that that you'll find out in the book. Um, but Bamze was actually the author's father's name. This is actually modelled on the experiences and the stories told to the author by her father. Um, so this is by Sandy Toxvig, who those of you in the UK will know, she's a TV personality and a comedian, I guess, but she was born in Denmark, so in Copenhagen, so, so on and so forth. And it says at the bottom, an extraordinary story, truly life affirming, and that's said by Michael Morpurgo, who obviously is a pretty amazing, um, he actually said, this is an extraordinary story of the courage of ordinary Danes rallying to save their Jewish countrymen from deportation and extermination under the noses of their Nazi occupiers. Beautifully observed, written with wit and warmth, he was a truly life-affirming book worthy of the courage of those great and good Danes who took part, and that's saying something. The blurb in the front actually says, I knew I should be afraid, but I didn't know yet what of the, what of. the Germans, the British, the French. We were theatre people. We didn't get involved in these things. It was nothing to do with us. And then it goes on to actually give you the, bur the blurb. Bamze is used to drama. His mother is a famous actress and his best friend Anton is one of the most daring boys in all of Denmark. This can get them both into a lot of trouble. When the invading German troops pour into the country, Bamze doesn't know how to act. Should he follow his father's advice and not stir up trouble or follow his daring brother, join the resistance and take part in the most demanding role of his life? Inspired by the experiences of Sandy Toxvig's father during the Second World War, Hitler's Canary is a funny and gripping account of a daring rescue. Um, I just found it a really amazing book. I think as well partly because you hear about the various involvements in the Second World War, but you never really hear about Denmark's involvement, and that was an interesting angle on it. And the fact that it was a true story made it all that more poignant, and the fact that it was about kids, I guess. Um, and having the last time I was in Paris, I actually visited the... Um, um, deportation Museum, obviously deportees from France, but again that kind of having seen that and what that represented, it kind of gave me a perspective on what the Danes were facing during this story, so yeah, um, there's a lovely quote in the beginning, so it says for Teddy, I don't know whether that was to her father, because obviously as I said, Banzé is the Danish for Teddy, but there's the quote. It says, the one condition necessary for the triumph of evil is that good men do nothing. And that was by Edmund Burke. Um, the layout of the book is really interesting. Obviously, there's a, the theatre plays a big role in it because his mother was an actress. Um, and each chapter, instead of being set out as a chapter, is set out like this. Like a, a take board, whatever you call them. So it says, overture and beginnings, time and place, like a, a theatre. And then if I go to the second one, so you can see, the second one then goes to Act 1, Scene 1, tells you the time and place, until by the end you have Act 3, Scene 8, by the end, so it's all divided up that way instead of actual chapters. And then after that, there's an epilogue labelled the same way. And then really interestingly, at the back, programme notes, which I thought was really clever. 
which is just Sandy Togsvig's notes about the rescue of the Danish Jews. Um, I don't know if you can see, but there are actually some really poignant um, facts about the Danish, about the mission, I guess, to rescue the Danish Jews and about how many Jews were taken away, how many came home, how many were children. And some of the numbers actually are quite horrific. Um, but I guess, again, that makes what you've just read even more real. And then um, there's a bit here as well, which was really touching, which goes on to say that it should be said that many of the Germans didn't obey their orders with regard to the Jews. Some did half-heartedly, some um, sabotaged so that they actually couldn't follow their orders properly. Um, I won't tell you what it actually says, because obviously if you read the book, you'll find out. But and that was a really lovely take on it, that there actually were some good Germans and some kind Germans who actually didn't believe in what they were being made to do, I guess. Um, and the suspense towards the end, when the, I won't tell you what happens towards the end, but the suspense towards the end, you'll know when you read it. That there was actually a part where I thought, oh, I don't know whether I can keep reading because I was so, you feel as if you knew these people and you're so scared to find out what happened. And the other nice thing is there were little pictures like here where the, the two boys are separated. There's a little picture of them hugging. I mean, obviously, this is technically a kid's book. It, it says 9 to 11, but I don't know. Um, I suppose they would just take it as a, a wartime adventure story, you know, whereas obviously to those older... Um, but yeah, it was, um, there were some almost funny moments and some touching moments and yeah, it's just, it's just a really good book. It's just a really, really good book and I'm really glad that I read it. There was actually a lovely quote somewhere, but I'm struggling to find it at the moment. Um, if I find it, I'll add it in the um, post note later, but you might come across it yourselves. Um, there were a few lovely quotes from the theatre as well, dropped in, and from a doll's house, there's a big a frequent mention of Ibsen and of Shakespeare, and it, again, it all sort of centres you on the fact that the theatre was a big part of their lives. Um, there, that's a lovely picture of uh, Bamze reading the posters and stuff. So yeah, um, I would really, really recommend this, whether you're between 9 and 11 or in your teens, or whether you're older or much older. I just think it's a wonderful read. So that's that one. So I'll show you once more. Again, that's Hitler's Canary by Sandy Togsvig. And if you've read it, I would love to know what you thought of it, so comment below. Speak to you soon. Bye.